This is the sermon for January 24th, 2021, and it's entitled Finding the Magic in the Mess. <clears throat> First from Psalm 62, 5 through 9. For God alone my soul waits and, and hopes in silence. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance, my mighty rock. My refuge is in God. Trust in God at all times, O people. Pour out your heart. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. And from 1 Corinthians 7, 29-31. Sisters and brothers, the appointed time has grown short. Let those who buy live as, the, as they who had no possessions, and let those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. And then from Mark 1, 14 through 20. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me and you will fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats, mending the nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed Jesus. <clears throat> well, I know you've heard this story, but maybe it's been a long time as it had been for me. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s last sermon uh, entitled, I See the Promised Land, Dr. King talked about the parable of the Samaritan who helped the person who had been left for dead along the road. And in the parable, he talks about the two men that were presented with a man on the ground that had been beaten by robbers on the road to Jericho, which was a lonely and dangerous road. One of the men was a priest that did not stop to help the man on the ground. There were many possibilities that could have led to the decision of the priest to not help the man. The priest may have asked himself, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? There was another man, a despised Samaritan, that stopped to help the man on the ground in Jericho. This man did not ask himself, if I stop to help, what will happen to me? But rather, he reversed the question and asked, if I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? I think that's a critical story. And I think as things change in our country, um, as we continue some of the injustice and some of the difficulties of 2020 on into 2021, we need to ask instead, not what will happen to me, but what will happen to that one who needs help? I was in a group and everyone in the group answered this question. What did you learn in 2020? And there were amazing answers to it. And I'd like for all of you to think about what did you learn in 2020? And please, by all means, tell me. I would like to hear. Um, many in 2020 experienced conflict. Uh, we were separated into various camps like never before. With so much swirling around us, we do have the solid ground of Jesus and his compassion to stand on. We have experienced the storms of life, especially in 2020. But through everything, God is with us, and Jesus calls us to share love. God turns many things inside out, the negative into a surprising positive. That certainly is true of Jesus being executed by the Roman powers. The Romans ran over anyone who challenged their absolute power, 
and I heard this, um, this metaphor. The Romans ran over anyone who challenged their absolute power like a semi-truck runs over a small chipmunk. And yet, somehow, God used even that tragedy for good in the world. Of course, our 2020 has been very hard, and many are anxious to get things back to normal. We need to lament. We need to grieve. We need to mourn the losses we've experienced and are experiencing. Of course, we need to be sad and angry and frustrated and whatever other emotions come to us. Strong emotions will rise, asking to be considered. Have you ever been emotional during the day and then dreamt about it at night? I know many of us have. Feelings are asking us to pay attention. The psalm is saying that in life, things and situations come and go. The poor and the rich alike are not permanent, no matter what people think. Our savings and our sufferings are not permanent. Paul recommends in 1 Corinthians that we do not become attached to things because everything, the whole world, is passing away. The present form of this world is passing away, Paul says. Also, that if you are attached to goods, let go of the attachment. We live in a consumer culture that encourages more and more accumulation, as if that could anchor us here. God is our rock and our foundation. Stuff is not. So what does last, we ask. We know that hope, joy, love, lessons learned, and lessons shared these last longer. What lasting gifts have we received? What have we given to others? What have we learned through the difficulties of life, or especially in 2020? Paul recommends that we let go of things that seem to trap us in this present world and embrace hope, faith, and love. That's what was recommended. So what did 2020 teach you? I attend a yearly creativity conference called Story, and I got to attend this last year because I didn't have to travel to Nashville for it. Um, one of the speakers I thoroughly enjoyed, he's called an experiential counselor, and I'm interested in learning more about that some year, not this year. And Mark Pimsler had this to say, compassion and love are the answer to every question. Compassion and love are the answer to every struggle. The question we ask is, how can I meet this challenge? Answer this question with compassion and love. We hear it again in Psalm 62, in 1 Corinthians, and in Mark. As Jesus calls the disciples, they drop their work and follow a radical, loving teacher. We have a choice. We can choose to stay in fear and anger, hate and division, or we can choose to love everyone, even those people we thought we hated. Instead, we can choose to love. How? How do we do this? A friend of mine recommended this. Uh, three words that begin with P. Pause, prayer, and present moment. And I thought that was so good. I asked if I could use that. Pause prayer, present moment. So how will you tell your story? What are you hoping for? Another speaker on the story pod podcast that we listened to recently, his name is Shabazz Larkin, and he put it this way, find the beauty despite the mess. <clears throat> and our host said, find the magic in the mess. Our lives are messy individually, collectively, physically, emotionally, and even spiritually. We try to clean up, and there are always are other messes. Anyone who has washed dishes, mopped floors, done laundry, cooked meals, um, whatever it is, we know it is never ending. And since that is true, we need to find the magic in the mess. My friend also mentioned the fly lady. It's not somebody I've ever followed. Uh, I don't even know what she's on. But she used to call it Mount Washmore. <laughs> she said, even after we've scaled the highest heights of Mount Washmore, 
it starts over again and we keep going. We are aware of the temporary passing away. We are aware of things that are not substantial. The world is passing away. <clears throat> God's love in us is substantial. The love we give others is lasting. <clears throat> this was my favorite quote of the workshop <clears throat> by Shabazz Larkin. I've been learning the lesson from the trees. <clears throat> A tree will bend over backwards, literally, to get to the light. It's not concerned with the darkness. It's not concerned with the shade. It's concerned with its roots going deep to the water and its twigs and its leaves stretching toward the light. I think that's the role of the storyteller. Even in the midst of the darkness, show the light, show it's possible, show a different side of what we can be. Well, when Jesus called you, did Jesus call you to follow? All right, so when you followed, what happened? Did you stretch toward love, faith, hope, light, and joy? What happened in 2020 when you grew toward the light? What will happen in 2021 when you grow and reach toward the light? How do you live the story of Jesus calling you and following Jesus? What does following Jesus look like in your life? When you feel overwhelmed with need, with sadness, with feeling stuck, with feeling too attached to this world that is passing away. How do you drop the darkness, like the fishing nets <clears throat> in Mark, and get up and follow Jesus? Remember, breathe, be present, notice how God is at work. In the push and pull of life, as things are constantly changing, you don't need to follow the busyness of your thoughts rushing to and fro. Sit down. Or pause. Be present with God. Be present. And be present with one another. Look for the hope, joy, love, and faith that God gives us. Be present. Remember who you are. You are God's beloved. Love and compassion are the answer to every problem, as Mark Kinsler said. Every stuck place, love and compassion are the answer. Compassion involves being vulnerable. <clears throat> Jesus calls us to pray and love. That is a great power in the world. So let's find the magic in the mess. Let's find it together. In life's beautiful, heartbreaking, joy-filled mess, God holds us. Amen.